Hello everyone, this is Ace of Space for Win here again with another Full House manga anime review. And today I've decided to take a look at the fancy comedy Last Fancy. Listen up and I hope you enjoy. As the name implies, the series is a comedy attempting to have a laugh at the RPG or fancy adventure genre. A type which you could find in a Final Fantasy series or maybe a Dungeons and Dragons game. The story revolves around two adventurers, Tian and Dre. Both trying to make a living as heroes. Unfortunately, their luck with, or to be more precise, their lack of money, makes them degrade to doing things that are anything but heroic, including stealing the belongings of the dead left on the battlefield, to mugging a centaur for his gold. These are the types of misadventures you can expect to find in Last Fantasy. Now, to be fair to the authors, the artwork is pretty decent. I mean, it's drawn in a more proportionate, or should I say, more serious way when compared to other works. And the style that they've used for this particular manga certainly gives it a mystical, fancy looking feel to it. Also, they're able to change the style to make it look more funny, or especially near the end, a more serious look to it. I think that was good. And they also thought the comedy wasn't bad either. I mean, the, our main characters, they certainly do things I never would have suspected from our main protagonists. And the author does bring up some points or situations common in the fa fancy adventure genre. I do poke some gentle fun in it, and I did really did enjoy that. However, after these two points, I really don't have much else now to say about this story. I think it's time I brought up my problems with this series, and why I do think it was a flop in the end. Okay, first off will be the unoriginality of it. I mean, this is the classic stereotype for this genre. I mean, dragons, wizards, massively overpowered heroes, and oddly named weapons. However, I really can't hold this against them too much, because, I mean, the story is trying to make fun of this genre in particular, so stereotypes, I guess, would be likely. I mean, but still, keeping such this simple template and unoriginality really did make it a bit bland to read. And I think characters were another problem. Okay, we have two main characters. I'm just going to talk about them for a minute. Tian was a student enrolled at the prestigious School of Magic, but due to his lack of funding for his tutelage, he had to go on hiatus for a while. He's a genius by many people's standards, but before he left, he was only able to learn level 1 magic. He probably has the better sense of judgement, you know, knowing that some of the stuff they do is wrong, but I think it's his poor background that makes him quite powerless when it comes to the temptation of money. And Dre, on the, on the other hand, although very strong, is terribly stupid. A shameless, happy go lucky that, whose lack of wisdom is one of the leading reasons for their money wars, with his decisions of buying useless items, such as a talking sword, or even invisible armour. Now, to be fair, these two characters actually weren't that bad. I mean, they were likeable. But I think with the exception of maybe one or two of the support characters, the rest were pretty un uninteresting, and had very little substance to them. Another annoying point was the questionable relevance of some of the other characters that appeared in the story. I mean there were characters that appeared at the end of a chapter and seemed to have you know, some kind of importance later in the story, but then, but then they never made another appearance again. I mean it was like some strange plot to annoy the reader. And then there were characters who kept appearing again and again, you know, as if they were going to reveal some plot twist or again have a more importance later in the story, but by, by the end of it they either had no or little impact on the actual story itself. This really annoyed me. I mean, I just think there was no need for them. Now then, a quick question. What do you think is one of the key features that make a good RPG or a fancy adventure story special? I'll tell you. A good plot or storyline. And for some reason, the authors failed to, to provide this, in my opinion. In the first couple of volumes, our main characters are just getting in danger and having a few money problems. With a few of these scenarios they're getting into in each volume. Now, these seem to be purely for laugh. No real plot line, just a series of events linked together through the same characters. You know, and I thought this is how it's going to be. These different scenarios having a little laugh at, you know, the genre. But then I got to the third volume. And in the third volume, our characters seem to get rooted down in this, what appeared to be a large story arc for the rest of the story. And they just started adding all this foreshadowing of these different mysterious people in the background of what was, I say this in quotation marks, possible things to come. And I was disappointed that there was, you know, they seemed to take away all this comedy that they were having before. But I mean, that was okay. 
I mean, as, as the story seemed to be, you know, starting to go somewhere like it did with Ma before it. But that's when I got to the fifth volume. I've now come to my biggest complaint and probably the, my main reason for disliking this manga. Now, normally I don't like doing spoilers in my reviews. But for this series, I'll make an exception. Better I tell you now instead of you having to go out and waste your money to find out. So at the end of the fifth volume, that long story arc I was talking about finally comes to an end, and our main characters can finally call themselves heroes after they had, after they had just saved this town, and they both feel like they've learned something from all this, and they feel you know empowered. Now I thought this was going to be the turning point for the story, you know the, it was finally coming into something better, and all these maybe all these characters that have been foreshadowing, you know, were finally going to reveal themselves and start explaining stuff. But what did I find at the end of the fifth volume? So on some of the last few pages, we pan to this hill. There's this woman sitting down, reading a book, and all these children are spread round her. And the woman closes the book, and then she tells them, that's all for today of the, of the story of the great heroes, Tian and Dre. And all these children, they all sign his appointment, and they walk off home, and that's pretty much it. What a letdown. A story with a mediocre plot ends with so many loose threads is unbelievable. I remember thinking after I finished it what a disappointment it had been. So many questions they had opened up, so many characters they had introduced and we never found out what the point of it was. This story was, could have been so much more and they said to kill off before it could go anywhere. So of course I guess another one of my complaints was it was too short. However, I don't think being a short manga allows you to get away with a crappy storyline. I know there are plenty of other mangas out there that are also short, but they've given good storylines and done it a lot better. Dot Hack, Legend of Twilight is a good example. I mean, it's only three volumes long, but it was able to wrap up itself at the end. It left you satisfied, it had a good ending, and didn't leave you on a cliffhanger like this one did. I really do believe that the series should have just stayed as it was in the first couple of volumes. A few random adventures, having a laugh at the fancy adventure drama, not really going anywhere. I mean, they could have story development, but you, you know, it didn't have to be much, because I mean, you're just having a, a comedy. But no, they had to make the illusion of a plot which would never finish. Right, I think I've said enough now to get my opinion across, so I think it's time to sum up my thoughts on Last Fancy. Okay, the positives for Last Fancy include nice artwork, and I think a style that really does fit well with the fancy theme, and decent comedy. Negatives for Last Fancy include a lack of originality, useless or irrelevant characters, a confusing and badly done plot, and of course, a disappointing ending that left too many questions unanswered and which made it too short. And because of this, and the other flaws I've just mentioned, I'm only going to give Last Fancy a 5 out of 10. I mean, it is a shame that nice artwork was used on this manga. I mean, the first couple of volumes were good, but I mean, that ending and plot was just terrible. And I really wouldn't waste your money on this. I mean, when the money you could have spent on these 5 volumes, you could easily get five volumes for another series which was a lot better. I would just avoid this series altogether. Well there's not much left to say now except thanks for listening as usual, hope you enjoyed it. If you have your own opinion about this manga then feel free to leave a comment. Um, that's pretty much it. This is this is basically a win, ending my manga review on Last Fancy. Till next time.